Okay, so this video is going to be about how you can use a vertical jump as a performance measure, as a way to manage training load, training volume for your athletes. So up here at the top, we have the name. So we have Jim, Dan, Scott, Bill Tucker. These are all just random, random names, not real people. Um, and then we have jump one, jump two, jump three. This is very easy if you have just jump mats or G flights or some other uh, tool that measures vertical jump. And then this doesn't have to be a vertical jump. It could be some other uh, measurement that you use as a way to assess preparedness for your athletes when they come into the gym. So I'm just going to use vertical jump as an easy example. So uh, before your season starts, let's just say preseason, you have one day dedicated for you to establish some sort of a baseline uh, jump for your athletes that you can use during the competitive season. So you can see jump one, jump two, jump three. These are the three trials up top here, and everyone has their jump. So Jim jumped to 28.1 inches, 28.6 inches, and 29 inches. From here, what we're gonna do is we are going to calculate the average. So press equals, type in average, and we are gonna take the average of all three trials. And there you go, his average is 28. 0.57 and then we'll just drag this down so that everyone else can have their average too. The way you drag it down is you click on the cell um, that you want to be dragged down and you're going to see the bottom right corner has this emphasized square in the bottom right. You just click that, hold it down and then drag it down with it and everything will pop up right there. So everyone now has their average. Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the standard deviation. So up here we'll just call it standard deviation, SD. We'll press equals, SD, and we're going to choose this STDEVP. And that's going to be the standard deviation. We're going to take the standard deviation of all three trials, punch it in there, and we'll drag it down just like we did with the average. So now everybody has their standard deviation. Now from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a window of performance. This window of performance basically is gonna say between this high number and this low number is a number that we know Jim can jump on any given day regardless of biological variation, psychological variation, social interactions that might change his performance on that day. So we'll just call this window high and window low and you can use any term you want i'm just using window high window low window as a way for an example for this video so what we'll do for the high window is we're just going to take the average so equals average plus the standard deviation and there you go so this basically says on any given day jim should be able to jump 28.93 inches okay and we'll just drag this down for everybody and all that is is the standard deviation plus the average. Now the window low is going to be just the exact opposite. So it's gonna be the average minus the standard deviation. And his low window is 28.2 and we'll drag it down for everybody else too. So what this says is on any given day, Jim should be able to jump between 28.2 inches and 28.93 inches. Now, one thing I don't like about this, that we're gonna take this a little uh, step a little bit farther, is we already know Jim can jump 29 inches, which is higher than his high window. So a way to change this window um, is going to be, we'll just call it real high window. And like I said earlier, you can name this whatever you want. This is going to be the average plus the standard deviation, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the standard deviation by, you can multiply it pretty much by anything you want for the sake of this video. I like to do multiply it by 1.2, um, and now that's gonna bump up this high window from 28.93 to 29.01, which is higher than his best jump. So we're just giving us a little bit more wiggle room on the higher end here. 
and we'll just drag this down for everybody too and then we'll do the same thing with the real low window and space it out and we're going to do the exact same thing except subtract so we're going to go the average minus standard deviation times 1.2 and let's reduce some of the decimals here let's just go two decimals so now this is saying Jim should be able to jump anywhere from 28.12 to 29.01 inches and this looks a lot more realistic because his lowest jump was 28.1, basically the same as 28.12. And his best jump was 29. And now we have the high window as 29.01. So that's a lot more realistic of a window, um, just giving us more wiggle room for Jim to jump. And we are gonna drag this down. And now everybody has a real low window and a real high window. Um, and like I said earlier, it's just giving us more wiggle room, giving the athletes a little bit more wiggle room to jump um, based on their biological, psychological, and social variation within the day. And then what I like to do as well is I just call this a red line number. So what this red line means is going to be the exact, exact same thing, it's the exact same number as this low window. And what this number means is that if Jim comes in one day and he jumps lower than 28.12, then that's an indicator that we should reduce some training volume, reduce some training load, um, do something to adjust the load on his body, the strain on his body to help him recover more. So maybe they had a hard practice that day. Maybe he didn't sleep well, whatever it is, there's some biological, psychological, or social uh, variation that's causing a variation in his performance that day. Now, the problem with this is for athletes who get a lot of minutes, say they're basketball players, they get a lot of minutes on the court and they're always hitting this red line. You can't always just back off training with them because now that's doing damage to them in the long run you're just under training them which it could potentially be worse than over training them so that's where it's up to you as a coach to just have a conversation with the athlete have a conversation with the coaching staff um, figure out the the best route to take training wise for these athletes that are always jumping in this red line most athletes they'll hit it every once in a while and then you know, okay, take one day, take two days to back off and then they'll be right back up jumping uh, in their window. So there's plenty of other ways to do this. You can get a lot more detailed using coefficient of variation. Um, maybe I'll make a video about that later on, but this is just one simple way that you can use um, statistics, I should not even really statistics, but math to just uh, set up a baseline or a window of performance to, tr to monitor your athletes and make sure they're staying within um, the correct training loads throughout their competitive season. So hope that helps.